Senator Collins uh, put it best when she wrote to you last week. Her letter was dated April 1st. Did you get her letter? Yes. Okay. And you saw that she wrote, your decision to pursue this course of action in the federal courts puts at risk not only critical, critical consumer protections, such as those protecting individuals suffering from pre-existing conditions, but also other important provisions of that law, such as the Medicaid expansion, dependent coverage for young adults to age 26, coverage for preventative services, and the regulatory pathway for FDA approval of biosimilar drugs, unquote. The Department of Justice's refusal to defend our law, the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, is distressing because of the harm that it poses to the physical and financial well-being of millions of Americans, and also because DOJ's refusal appears to be driven by political considerations rather than health care policy discussions or sound legal arguments. Attorney General Barr, you're not a health care policy expert, but your department is taking the lead on attempting a massive overhaul of our American health care system. So I want to make sure we agree on a, a few of the top line facts. And let's go through a couple of quick yes or no questions at the outset. Number one, have you conducted or viewed an analysis to evaluate the effects of DOJ's litigation position to overturn the ACA? <laughs> Uh, the effects on consumer costs and coverage. Have you done that analysis or have you reviewed one? Well, when we're faced with a, a legal question, we, we try to base our answer on the law. On the law. So the answer is no. And I, here's the thing. I can't imagine that you would take that kind of a dramatic, drastic action without even trying to evaluate the consequences for the American consumers, the people using the health care, the people for whom these premiums are paid. But let's start the process well, do, of do thinking you mean, through you mean that. In the event if, you may, that the if you're successful down. in this lawsuit that you're supporting and the entire Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act is struck down, millions of Americans who currently receive health insurance coverage under the law are at risk of losing that coverage. Am I correct in that? I think the president has made clear uh, that he favors not only pre-existing conditions, but would like uh, action on a broad uh, health plan. So he is proposing a substitute for Obamacare. The one that's going to come after the next election, you mean? Uh, the one that will come down if and when. Well, Obama let me be the one to inform down. you, should the law be struck down, p millions of people who get their coverage through the ACA marketplace would lose their coverage, and tens of millions more would see their, their premiums skyrocket. In addition, if you're successful, 12 million people nationally and 750,000 people in my home state of Pennsylvania who have coverage under the Medicaid expansion would also likely lose that coverage. Am I correct in that, sir? Do you think it's likely we are going to prevail? If you prevail, well, you're devoting scarce resources of your department toward that effort. Are you not, Attorney General? We're in litigation. We have to take a position. The answer is we, yes. We so take you're position in litigation. And, validate it, and if you succeed, that many people will lose their coverage nationally from Medicaid and 750000 from Pennsylvania alone, right? I'm just saying that if you think it's such an outrageous position, you have nothing to worry about. Let the courts do their job. If you succeed, well, I, my time is out. We'll come back to this. Uh, yield back, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Attorney General. Thank you for being here today. For a couple of years at the end of the Obama administration, violent crime in America started to tick up. That means more robberies, more murders, and more assaults. I'm encouraged to see that the FBI's preliminary crime statistics that were released right, in late February. So there was February. just a really key so moment fine. there mm -hmm. that, that really stopped all of us here on set, and that was when the Democratic Congressman Matt Cartwright was questioning Bill Barr about the administration's case, siding with that Texas judge, uh, to to overturn the entire Affordable Care Act. Right, and the, the administration's answer? effort to to block ACA Obamacare in court, and Attorney General, who is basically you know, the, the, the America's top lawyer just said they're going to lose. John Avalon. He, he seemed to insinuate that. So yeah. I tried to ask him, did you look at the impact 
on Americans and their health care mm -hmm. if this case is won. And he's been pushing Barr on that. And then Barr, and we'll play the clip in a second, seemed to, you're reading a little bit into to his body language here, but he seemed to say, do you think it's likely that we'll prevail? And, and, and I think our reading, watching it closely in real time was, is he insinuating that this was a political decision he was pushed into by the president mm. and doesn't think it's a case that's yeah. likely to win? So some important background on that is a reporting from Politico just a few weeks ago that he and Secretary Azar right. were the two in the administration and the cabinet mm. who were pushing back internally saying to the team, don't do yeah. this, don't do this. Yes, because the DOJ is reversing its, its policy to date on this by backing this case, which is a play to the base case, right. um, but contradicts the positions they've taken, let alone the implications uh, for the people. And timing is key here because okay. that decision was made after the Mueller summary came out when the president was feeling empowered. He's on top of his game. He's like, you know what? I'm going to take another That's crack really at Obamacare. Um, the lawyer's present. I think we got a couple. Um, you guys got degrees, right, on this? Uh, is he right that this case doesn't has a low shot of of succeeding yeah i mean that was that was my assessment before i mean i thought that the the department of justice position before was the right position they supported it well in the briefs that they had filed which is one of the reasons it's hard now to turn around and try to argue you know contrary to the citations you made before yes. so you know i think it was a political decision i think bill barr kind of tried to spin it as look i'm new i came in i looked at some things and that's how this happened but it may very well be the president just, just changing his mind people who are just joining us guys in the control room just let us know when we have that so we can play it for people so the American people can watch and judge for themselves, Ellie. I, I agree with Jennifer. That's how it should come out on the law. But let's let's play devil's advocate for a little bit here. The district court, the trial level court in, in the federal courts has said Obamacare will, should be struck down entirely. Now, that's on hold. They're now in the Circuit Court of Appeals in the Fifth Circuit, which is one of the most conservative districts. Mm -hmm. They may well take the same position. The entire ACA needs to fall. Mm -hmm. If that happens, then it's going to the Supreme Court. We've now got Justice Gorsuch. We've got Justice Kavanaugh. We've got Chief Justice Roberts mm -hmm. playing that swing role. Mm -hmm. Now, last time in 2012, Chief Justice Roberts voted to uphold the ACA. Right. But the basis that he did that on, mm -hmm. which is the individual mandate, is now gone. Yeah, so there is a right. realistic chance that the ACA gets struck down.